fathers have told us. Where'd you get your information from? They said, our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, shewing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he had done. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. There's a lot said in the word of God, amen, about us making things known to our children. Amen, and teaching our children that the generation to come might know them. Boy, this generation, amen, to come is in trouble. The reason this generation to come is in trouble because our generation's in trouble. Amen. The reason this generation to come don't have much hope is because we don't have much hope. Amen. I'm telling you, we better get things in order, amen, as the people of God, amen, or the generation coming out of us is going to be far removed, amen. I was looking back through church history, and the church, amen, is far from where she was, amen, when she was founded, in the wrong direction. And my heart's troubled about that, amen, that this generation to come, I'm, I'm really afraid, amen. I want to just interject this. I'm really afraid that our children... Amen, and their children is going to find a difficult time finding a place to go to church. Amen. Amen, because the church of our day, amen, has dropped the ball. Amen. I want to tell you, friends, sometimes we are too busy worrying about things, amen, that are not of importance than we are to things that are of great importance. Amen. Yes, you know, I think, amen, sometimes we get too involved Amen. In the minor things that we forget all about the major things. Well, we got some major things, amen, that we need to be concerned about. I'm talking about as the church of the living God. Amen. Things that I believe that's not only affecting this generation, but the generation to come. Amen. We better get back to the basics. Amen. And realize that there are things of more importance. Amen. Uh, than fighting and fussing all the time about little things that don't make, make, make no difference. Amen. Look what he said here. He said in verse number uh, 6 that the generation to come might know them. What are we teaching that generation that's to come? Even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God. That's a good place to start. Amen. And not forget the works of God. Boy, we could talk about the works of God today and how good God's been, and we wouldn't get out of here to dark. Amen. God's been good to us. Amen. He said, but keep his commandments and might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation. Why is that generation so stubborn and rebellious? He said, a generation that set not their heart aright and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. The children of Ephraim being armed and carrying bows turned back in the day of battle. See a lot of that going on. They kept not the covenant of God and refused to walk in his law and forget his works and his wonders that he had shewed them. Marvelous things did he in the sight of their fathers, in the land of Egypt, in the field of Zoan. Look what he said in verse 13. He, you know who he is, don't you? God. Amen. God done something for them they couldn't do for themselves. Has God ever done anything for you that you couldn't do for yourself? Amen. Brother Perry mentioned it this morning. You can start with salvation. Amen. You couldn't save yourself. You tried too many, many times. Amen. It didn't work. But Jesus passed by your way and he saved you, amen. He gave you a life, amen, that's worth living. Has he ever did anything for you you couldn't do yourself? Amen. I'm glad I can say amen to that. I can go back in my life and see where God showed up and done some things for me I couldn't do. Man, if I could have done it, I would have done it a whole lot sooner, amen. But God, amen, showed up and divided some seas, amen. He divided the sea and caused them to pass through. And he made the waters to stand as a heap. In the daytime also he led them 
with a cloud and all the night. Notice that word, and all the night. Not just a little bit of the night hour, amen, but all the night with a light of fire. He claved the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink as out of great depths. He brought streams also out of the rock and caused waters to run down like rivers. And they sinned yet more against him by provoking the Most High in the wilderness. Can you imagine, amen? I get where we're going, but can you imagine, amen, the more God did. The more God did in their midst, they sinned yet more and more. I don't understand that, amen, but we're the same way. The more God does, the more we want. I'm telling you, it don't matter what God does, amen, it always seems like it's not enough. We got to have more, amen. And boy, they provoked him. Look what he said, and they sinned yet more against him by provoking the Most High in the wilderness. And they tempted God in their heart by asking meat for their lust. You see, they was asking meat, amen, not because it was necessary, they was asking it that they might consume it upon their own lust, amen. It was something they wanted, something they had to have, amen. And so look what he says. He said, yay, boy, this crowd went from good to bad to worse. He said, yet, he said, yay, they spake against God. I wonder how often we speak against God. He said, they said, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? I mean, after all that he had already done, man. I mean, boy, he brought them up out of Egypt. They was in bondage, amen. They had a hard taskmaster. The Lord rose, raised up a man and sent him down there and delivered them out of Egypt. Boy, he opened the Red Sea, amen, and the rock, amen, gave forth water. He sent angels' food out of heaven and fed them. Can I tell you something? There was a time when that angels' food was good enough. There was a time, amen, when that manna was the best thing they had ever had. Boy, but all of a sudden, the manna wasn't good enough anymore. Boy, I say, oh, me, that's been me before. Amen, some times in my life when this is the best thing I've ever had. But it ain't good enough anymore. Boy, are we not a people just like them. Look what he said. He said, Behold, he smote the rock, or he smote the rock that the waters gushed out, and the streams overflowed. Can he give bread also? Man, can he provide flesh for his people? Therefore the Lord, the Lord heard this and was wroth. So a fire was kindled against Jacob, and anger also came up against Israel because they believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation. Though he had commanded the clouds from above and opened the doors of heaven and had rained down manna upon them to eat and had given them of the corn of the heaven, man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to, to the full he caused an east wind to blow in the heaven, and by his power he brought in the south wind. He rained flesh also upon them as dust, and, and, and feathered fowls like as the sand of sea. And he let it fall in the midst of their camp round about their habitations. So they did eat and were filled, for he gave them their own desire. They were not estranged from their lust. But while their meat was yet in their mouths, the wrath of God came upon them and slew the fattest of them and smote down the chosen men of Israel. And all they sinned, he said, for all this they sinned still and believed not for his wondrous works. Amen. Can I tell you, God sent his wrath. Amen. But you know what? In the midst of that they did, they continued to sin against God. I've seen situations where God, amen, show up and boy, he pour out his wrath, and he gives us warning, and he gives us opportunity. But you know what we do a lot of times? Just like they did. We're stubborn and rebellious, and we can't see what God's doing, how to get our attention, and we carry on in our way. But God, amen, his wrath, he was wroth, amen. He said, therefore their days did they consume in vanity and their years in trouble. When he slew them, he said, then they sought him, 
And they return and inquire early after them, after God. And they remember that God was their rock and the high God their redeemer. Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth and they lied unto him with their tongues. For their heart was not right with him, neither was they steadfast in his covenant. Look in verse 38. But he, there's God again, amen. He said, but he, it's amazing how much better God is to us than we are to him. Amen. Matter of fact, it's amazing how much better God is to us than we are to each other. Amen. He said this, he said, but he being full of compassion. Well, I'm glad he's God. He said, forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yea, many a time turned he his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. For he remembered that they were but flesh. A wind that passeth away and cometh not again. How oft did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They remembered not his hand nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. Do you remember being delivered from some enemies? Amen. He said this, he said, how he was wroth. How he had wrought his signs in Egypt and his wonders in the field of Zoan. And he turned their rivers into blood and their floods uh, uh, that they could not drink. You remember even in that time they were saying, I'll do it, Lord, but tomorrow. Give me one more night with the frogs. Amen. He was content. Amen. They said, yes, Lord, we want to get right. Yes, Lord, we know you're God, but we want to do it tomorrow. We always want to do it tomorrow. Amen. He said he sent divers sorts of flies among them, which devoured them, and frogs, which destroyed them. He gave also their increase under the caterpillar and their labor in the locust. He destroyed their vines uh, with hail and their sycamore trees with frost. Uh, he gave up their cattle also in the hail and their flocks to hot thunderbolts. He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, anger, wrath and indignation and trouble by sending evil angels among them. He made a way to his anger. He spared not their soul from death but gave their life over to pestilence. Amen. Father in heaven, we love you, Lord, this morning. God, we thank you for your goodness, Lord, how blessed we are uh, to just be a child of God. I pray, Lord, you'd make preaching easy. Lord, we need your help. We need your grace. Lord, I pray that you'd speak to our hearts, Lord God, and do that in our midst that only you can. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I read all of that, and I want to focus, amen, on verse number 19 this morning. He said this, Yea, they spake against God. And they said, Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Amen. I want to preach on this thought this morning. Uh, does your life declare, Can God uh, furnish a table in the wilderness? Or God can furnish a table in the wilderness? Amen. I want to tell you, friend, this folk here had been through a lot. Amen. Brother Holt, they had saw God uh, come through in their life time and time again. Amen. Uh, yet in the midst of all that, all they did uh, was grumble, gripe, and complain. They murmured, amen. Uh, they was disgruntled, amen. And Brother Perry, no matter what God done, it was never enough, amen. I'm telling you, God showed up uh, many a times, amen, yet when they didn't deserve it, amen. How many times has God ever done something for you uh, when you didn't deserve it, amen? I want to tell you, he did that for this crowd, and yet uh, the more that he did, amen, uh, they was found saying, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Amen. Uh, you know I'm amazed that anybody would ask that question. Amen. Uh, but I am very amazed that this people, amen, uh, Brother Ty would begin to think uh, after all they had just seen God do in their life, uh, that they would turn around and say, uh, can God furnish us a table in this wilderness? Amen. It's amazing what the wilderness will cause you to do. Amen. It's amazing. Amen. Is that right brother Brad I want to tell you uh, seems to be things will be going good in your life and God's on the throne uh, and he's mighty God he's the creator of the heaven and the earth uh, and you know what I'm glad to know him I'm telling you friend and the church you go to is the best church in, on this side of heaven and God's on the throne and all is well and guess what the people I go to church with is the dearest and the best Amen. and you know what all of a sudden wilderness comes 
all of a sudden, amen, a dark days come. And God ain't who he said he was. Amen. And the church ain't what I thought he was. Amen. And the people of God don't love me. Amen. And you know what? Is that true tonight? Uh, we get to that place where we all of a sudden start wondering, uh, can God do anything? Amen. After all that he's done in your life. Amen. Oh, my friend, this crowd here was that way. Uh, Brother Ty, I want to notice by way of introduction, uh, that question revealed uh, their faithlessness. They was, they was faithless, Brother Perry, in the midst of all that God had done. If anybody should have been trusting God, it should have been them. If anybody ought to know God was in control, they should have. I mean, they just had come up out of Egypt. Uh, they had just witnessed God, amen, and His mighty power opened the Red Sea. Uh, they had just witnessed God not only gave them water from a rock, but the water gushed out, amen. And they were streams of water, Brother Jacob. They saw all this. And even after that, they would say, can God furnish us a table in the wilderness? How many times in the wilderness do you get that way? How many times in the wilderness do I question, can God do this? Uh, can God do this? Uh, can God meet my needs? Uh, can God answer my prayer? Uh, can God show up? What's God going to do? Amen. I want to tell you, friend, again, uh, God's not going to do anything that you can do yourself. Amen. Amen. Look what he goes, look at this. In verse number 20. He said, Behold, he smote the rock that the waters gushed out, and the streams overflowed. Can he, can he give bread also? <laughs> oh, uh, can he provide flesh for his people? I mean, man, God done poured out manna from heaven. God had done done all these great things. And here it is. Man, I just saw water come forth from the rock. But can God give us bread? Can God give us flesh? Amen. Have you ever find yourself asking a question, can God do it? I mean, can God do it? Hey, I find myself there, amen. Hey, old faithless generation, amen. Uh, that's what we are sometimes. Uh, but I want to tell you as a child of God, uh, your life is either, either declaring, uh, can God furnish a table in the wilderness, or it's saying God can, amen. And I want to tell you, friend, uh, there's people in our lives uh, uh, that need to see that God can, amen. Uh, not that can God, uh, they don't need to be questioning, you know what, God can, amen. God can do anything he wants to do. Amen. You know what I find? Not only was their faithless, they were forgetful. This crowd forgot. It's amazing, amen, how forgetful they was. And before we get too hard on them, how much do we forget? I mean, how many times has God showed up in our lives? How many times has God walked us uh, through the Red Sea? Amen. How many times has God uh, showed up in the midst of the fire? How many times, amen, has God supplied our need? Uh, how many times, amen, uh, when we thought all hope was gone, God showed up? Oh, and you know what? We'll find ourselves, that's today, and tomorrow, uh, we, you know what? When God shows up, we declare God can. Yes. But yes. then tomorrow comes, yes. and we say, can God? Oh, can God can, amen. And here it is, amen, this, they forgot all that he had done. How many times has God come through on our behalf? Amen. You know what? God's still God. And they questioned it in God, amen, they were forgetful. But can I tell you, it was foolish for them to even ask a question such as, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? How foolish, amen, are we sometimes uh, to even question what God has already told us in his Bible, amen, uh, that he's capable of and what he can do. And what we'll do is we'll wonder, hey, you know what, Brother Perry, I'm amazed how I can sit with you and I can tell you God can do anything. Uh, God can heal you. Uh, God can help you. He can see you through the darkest night. He can help you in the midnight hour. Uh, but guess what? When it's me... It, not, it ain't no longer God can, it's can God. Yeah. Yes, amen. It's easy to sit with your brother or your sister and say, yes, God can. But then here I am and we say, can God? Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Oh, man, the wilderness will turn us, amen, in a direction we don't want to turn. The wilderness, amen, will start causing us to question God. And that's what they're doing there. Uh, can I say, first of all, uh, there was a demonstration of God's ability. 
In verse number 12 to verse 16, he said, Marvelous things uh, did he in the sight of their fathers in the land of Egypt. Uh, you know, I could echo that. Marvelous things, amen. I'm telling you, God has done marvelous things uh, in our lives, amen. Uh, you far uh, removed from where you used to be, amen. Uh, your life has been changed, amen. Uh, can I tell you, your whole life has been rearranged. Uh, and we sat around wondering, can God? Yes, God can. But look what he goes on, amen. He declared, amen, he said, he divided the sea. He caused him to pass through. Not only, you know what, it would have been something if God just divided the sea. You know what, they had stood on this side of the Red Sea and just amazed, amen, that there was a wall there and there was dry ground, but they never passed through it. Sometimes, and I believe that's what we do a lot of time, God opened the Red Sea, and we'll stand back and we'll look in amazement, but we don't have the faith that it takes to take a step. Amen. We don't have the faith that it takes, amen, uh, to get in where the water used to be, amen. And so we'll stay on the banks, amen, and not experience what God is trying to do in our lives. And this is what he's doing. You know what? When he divided that Red Sea, you know what he done, Brother Ty? Uh, the children of Israel uh, marched forward. They didn't stay on this side of the Red Sea. Uh, they didn't stay over there. Although there was a time, can you imagine? Here they are, amen. Moses done went down there and brought them up out of Egypt. Man, praise God. All of a sudden, amen, they begin to march. And as they march, amen, they come to the Red Sea. Amen. And at the Red Sea, oh, it would have been better that we had died in Egypt. It had been better, amen, that we had stayed down in Egypt. At least we had some melons and some leeks and some onions and we had all this stuff gone for us. But he brought us out here in the wilderness to die. Amen. It's amazing, amen, when we get in a hard place how our perception of God changes. Amen. Amen. You know what? God, amen, was trying to do something in their midst. And boy, he was, brought them to that place where they could see uh, there was a Red Sea there and the enemies pursuing behind. And they got their eyes off of God, amen, that had already done wonderful and marvelous things in their sight and started to look at the obstacles that they faced. And all of a sudden, amen, it had been better to die in Egypt. Well, you know what God does? God says, Moses, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. You see, our problem is we like walking when we're told to stand still. And we like standing still when we're told to walk. Amen. A lot of times, amen, that's the way it is. God said, just stand still, Brother Perry. Uh, just be patient. Uh, don't get in too big a hurry. Uh, don't rush these things, amen. But you know what we do? We get impatient, and we got to fire figure this thing out on our own. Amen. I guarantee you if that crowd there uh, would have tried to cross that sea, they'd have drowned. Yeah. Amen. But you know what they did? They stood still. Yeah. And they come a time when God said, okay, uh, pass through. And here they go, amen. And as they pass through, amen, they get on the other side of the Red Sea. And here it goes, God is the best thing in the world, Amen. Yes, amen. You remember what he said over there in chapter 15, 1? They sang a song. Some of us done lost our song, amen. It didn't take too long either. It didn't even take a week from last Sunday, amen. We completely lost our song. I mean, God was victorious, amen. God's been good. He's a glorious God. But then our song, hey, we don't even get out the door and get back Sunday night, and some of us done lost our song. I mean, we don't, hey, God, I mean, he moved in the midst and done some wonderful things. Souls were saved. Amen. God's people rejoiced him. And some walked back in on Sunday night like this. You know what it is? You know what they say? God, I knew, I know you showed up this morning and it was God can. But we back tonight and our question is, can God? Amen. Oh, yes, Amen. It's can God do it again? And here it is, amen. When they got over there, they sang a song. You know what it was? The Lord had triumphed gloriously in our lives. 
Oh, God, amen, it's been good. They sang it, amen, but it ain't too long, amen. They lost that song again. Amen, all of a sudden, yes, the Lord opened the Red Sea. But you know what, Lord? We thirsty. Right. Amen. And God says, that ain't no problem. <laughs> There's a rock over there. Yeah. Just smoke the rock, amen. amen. Yeah. Just smoke the rock. Yes. 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 It's a picture of Christ, is it not? Smoke the rock. And you know what? Water come gushing out. Can you imagine the amazement how that must have been on that crowd's face when Moses smote the rock and water came springing out, amen. Oh, you know what I would have thought? Oh, praise God, he's God, amen. You know what? From then on, it should have been God can do anything. God can do anything he wants to do. Well, I mean, brother, how many of you can bring water from a rock? You go out there and rub them together all you want to, you ain't going to get nothing but a spark. Amen. But God, amen, he says, I'm going to show you. It had been one thing, amen. Y'all, why didn't God, amen, tap into the mighty deep uh, and get like a well, amen, and get water? Because man can do that. But man can't bring water from a rock. And he said, I'm going to show you who's God, amen. And Moses ain't going to get no glory for this. This is the work of God. And so, bro, you know what? Smoke the rock, here's water. Ain't long getting that. Lord, we, we hungry. Amen. So what does God do? He sent them angels food. Right. Praise God, I ain't never ate anything like this. Right. Amen. Amen. Hey, this stuff is good. <laughs> You, man, you know what angels' food made them do? They forgot all, I didn't hear them, amen, when the angels' food started asking for no meat, leeks and melons. I did not hear them asking for no onions, amen, when the corn was raining from heaven, amen, and God was feeding that lean soul of theirs. But you know what, my friend, as God began to feed them, Oh, this show is good. They'd go out every morning and gather it up. And you know what they'd do? They'd eat till they was full, amen. And praise God, he's on the throne, amen. God hadn't forgot about us. He knows where we at. Even in this wilderness, amen. God's still good, amen. But you know what I find, amen? That's a lot like what we are. We'll get up every morning and God's got a table spread for us. There's food on our table. Ain't anybody in here starving, amen. God's been good. He has provided plenty and then we'll sit back and say can God furnish a table in this wilderness when we ought to be declaring God can God can hey he already has but you know what I guarantee you if any of you in here didn't eat this morning it ain't because it wasn't there amen but you know what we do we do just like they did oh God amen it was good Hey, you know what? There's been a time, amen, when tomato gravy and a biscuit was good. I mean, it was surfaced until that's all there is. Amen. I mean, when the cupboards are full, tomato gravy and a pan of biscuits, amen, is like living in heaven, amen. I mean, it's glory, glory, amen. I'm telling you to put some meat on your bones, amen. Uh, but I tell you what, uh, when the cupboards are empty and God says there's a sack of flour and a can of tomatoes, uh, that ain't enough. Uh, we're not satisfied. Uh, God, we got to have more, amen. Yes, amen. That's like what we are, is it not? Boy, it sure was good, Amen. It sure was good last Sunday morning. Yeah. But we come back this morning, had the people's gone. I said, so God, you ain't really doing what I thought you was doing. I mean, it ain't good enough no more. How we got to have something else. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You know, I'm amazed, amen. You know what I'm else amazed by? I love you, preacher, amen. I love you to death, preacher, amen. I'm glad God sent you here, man of God. I love you to death until I say something you don't like, and then all of a sudden, amen, I'm not so sure about this thing no more. Amen. I'm not so sure about this thing no more. And you know what? I'm almost convinced there's people that belong to Faith Baptist Church that does not want this church to go forward. Yes, that does not, that's got their feet in the stinking mud and says, you know what, we're not, amen, going anywhere. Amen. amen. But you know what? They're going to realize one day that tomato gravy was good enough. Right. Amen. amen. 
Boy, we lost what we had. You know what? God will give you what you want. He gave this crowd what they wanted. He said, I'm going to give you the desires of your lust, and I'm going to pour out quail, and you're going to eat till you're full. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to send leanness to your soul. Yes, you know what, that's what God says, amen. And boy, we find, amen, in this. You know what, it's a, that's what, hey, you remember Abimelech? You know what Abimelech done? They arose a famine. Brother Hold, it was like a wilderness. They wouldn't, they wouldn't a whole lot to eat. There was no bread. Right. Oh, you realize where he was at was the, was the house of bread. But he said, we've got to go to Moab. And he went to Moab, amen, and God killed him. Yes, God killed him. God took him out. Not only did he take him out, I'm telling you, after he died, his two sons married two Moabite women, and it was after the death of Abimelech. When God removed that authority figure out of that family's life, that family went astray right. in a hurry. They said, you know what? We're going to take some Moabite wives. You know what God did then? God killed them. Yeah. And it left Naomi with Ruth and Orpah. Right. You know what Orpah did? Orpah ran back, amen. But Ruth said, you know what? My people, your God should be my God. She done saw enough out of Naomi, amen. Uh, she done saw enough out of Naomi, brother Holden, and says, you know what? That God you serve, amen. I want him to be my God, and your people's going to be my people, uh, so I'm going to follow, amen. 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 Oh, yes, and you know what I find? There was a few of them that died in the wilderness. All because, amen, they started questioning I never see in that text where Abimelech ever approached God and asked him for no bread. He never approached God and said, Lord, what about this famine? I'm in the wilderness. Oh, what do you want me to do? I've got a wife. I've got children. Oh, we got to take care of them. Amen. Oh, God, I'm responsible. I'm the head of the house. What am I going to do? What he does, amen, he starts walking by sight. Amen. And as he walked by sight, he lost those things that was the most precious to him. I was studying this past week. I won't say much about him. You know what? Absalom sent Joab two messages. And he told him. And, and, and Joab refused. And you know what God said? You know what? He said, we're going to set his barley field on fire. And I thought, man, God knows where your barley field is. You know what those things, amen, that's most precious to us, God knows. Amen. God knows those things that's dearest. And sometimes when we get out of the will of God and we go astray, God will touch those barley fields uh, to get us where we're supposed to be. And you know what? When God starts touching those barley fields, you better wake up. You better open your eyes, amen, amen, unless he sets them on fire. Amen. But we find, amen, this text here, that these people, amen, they had saw, amen, a demonstration of what God could do. I mean, they saw the power of God. Only God could have opened that Red Sea. Only God could have brought water from a rock. They saw a manifestation of the power of God. How many of you have ever saw a manifestation of the power of God? How many times has God done something for you you couldn't do yourself? How many times has God showed himself to be mighty and strong? And here it is, he not only demonstrated that through his power, but his presence. I'm telling you, he led them, uh, it was by a pillar of cloud, uh, by the daytime. It was by fire at night. Uh, brother, hold every hour of their day and night, uh, they realized uh, that God was in their midst, uh, that God was here. And he also told us he'd never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. I mean, he's there all the time. Just because we can't identify him don't mean he don't identify us. Amen. Boy, but you know what else? They saw the provisions of God. God showed up in these people's lives. They knew that there was a God in heaven. But you know what I find? Even in the midst of the demonstration of God's ability, they was doubting God's ability. Look what he said in verse 17. And they sin yet more 
against him by provoking the most high in the wilderness and they tempted God in their heart by asking meat for their lust yea they spake against God and said can God furnish a table in the wilderness uh, they started doubting the abilities of God uh, can I tell you they spake against God you know what that is you know what when we murmur and complain and we're not content with what God has done do you know what that is that is one of those doubting God's ability that's one of those that listen I, I passed by the sign a couple times this week and it's a murmuring and complaining is, is kin to unthankfulness amen and, and you know what they doing now listen to this I wrote this down God had given them bread and water yet they thought he could not furnish a table in the wilderness look something else in verse number 20 it said behold he smote the rock that the waters gushed out and the streams overflowed can I tell you they wouldn't denying what God had already done right. you don't see them denying what God had already done in their lives Miss Dinah but you know what you do see they were insinuating that there was things that God couldn't do are we not guilty of the same we ain't denying what God has done in our lives. We know that God is the author of it. But we assinuate times that there's things that he can't do. And you know what this crowd done? This crowd, you know, he is able. But you know what this crowd done when they done that? They provoked his wrath. God said, you know what? I have been good to this people. Who are they to question what I can do? God should have been questioning who they was and what they could do. But no, they was questioning him. Now I want you to notice a disclosure of God's ability. You know what? In, in the first part of this chapter, you know what I find out? They had heard about what God could do from their fathers. This children, before they ever seen it, with their own eyes, they had already been told it by their fathers, Brother Ty. Their fathers had already told them, can I tell you, there is a God in heaven. I'm telling you, friend, I want to tell you about a time we was down in Egypt. I mean, we was making brick. It was hard, amen. Uh, but God sent us a deliverer. And boy, he brought us up out of Egypt. Uh, we crossed the Red Sea. Uh, they heard about it, amen. Uh, those that was born, they didn't see it with their own eyes, but they had told from their fathers what God had done. Yes, and you know what? Their responsibility was to do is to not let it die. They was going to be more children born. They was going to be another generation. And they was to declare to their children what God could do so that they didn't forget that there was a God in heaven. And you know what, brother? We have dropped the ball. What does our life declare? Three quick things, amen. What does our life declare to our children? Our children, amen, are in the balance. Our children are in the midst, amen. And are they, or is our life saying, uh, can God declare, uh, can God furnish a table? Or are we saying unto them, uh, no matter what, it don't matter how hot the fire, how deep the waters, uh, God can furnish a table in this wilderness. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, look. This generation's coming after us. And I don't know if you've noted, our generation is dropping like flies. I'm talking about a generation that has seen God. They ain't just been told about it, they saw it. But you know what? They've dropped by the wayside. Who's going who's to declare to their children? Brother Hope, what are we declaring to our children this morning? Can God furnish a table? Or are we saying to them, God can? Son, I don't care how bad it gets. Come on, preacher. I'll tell you, it ain't never too bad for God. Yes. I don't care. Listen. Boy, son, I've been there yes. when there wasn't no food in the cupboard. Right, brother. But you know what? God sent somebody by yes. and the doorbell rang. 
and they had a sack of groceries, amen. And that was the hand of my God. And God is good. And it can't get bad enough. It can't get too far gone. A uh, son, there's going to be days uh, when you're going to be gone. I'm not going to be there. Uh, but you just remember uh, there is a God in heaven. Uh, that kid, there is a God in heaven that's there for you. Don't never forget who he is. What are we declaring to them? Are we grumbling and griping and complaining? Listen, why are we so negative in our day about everything and everybody? I mean, God, it's as though God can do nothing. Everybody's devils. Everybody's going to hell. And we're the only people in the world that loves Jesus. Amen. And all we're going to do is gripe and grumble and complain about him. What is that saying to our children? Oh, you know what? I'm afraid we have lost our children to entertainment. Amen. I mean, boy, I'm, I'm telling you, we, we, we entertain them with everything in the world and there's some entertainment. Listen, I'm not against entertainment. I'm talking about as long as it's decent and in order. Amen. But you know what? What about God? Do we, do we, are we as passionate about God as we are our entertainment? Are we as passionate about God as we are football games? Are we as passionate about God as we are volleyball? Are we as passionate about God as we are doing our own thing? I'm telling you, friend, we have lost our passion in this generation. And what is our children going to do? They're going to turn and follow the passions that we give them. Yes. Listen, this crowd said, can God furnish a table in this wilderness? They should have been saying, God can. They, you know what they should have done? They should have sat there, and they should have, they should have put their arm around their, their sons and said, you know what? Yes, sir. The wilderness is real. Come on, now. Come on. I'm not doubting right. that there is a wilderness. And it's for real. Right. But can I tell you, this wilderness is no match for God. Go. Let me tell you about a time. Let me tell you about a time. You think this is bad. You ought to have been with us. You ought to have been back over here with us. Man, I want to tell you, hey, hey, listen, you ought to have been back over there when I was sitting by my son's bedside, not knowing if he was going to live or die. And God showed up. You ought to have been back over there, amen, when the very people that you loved and you preached to, they hated your guts, amen, and didn't want to hear what you had to say. But you know what? God showed up in the midst. And God was a strong arm. And God was a strong tower. Let me tell you, friend, this wilderness is no match for God. What are we declaring to our children this morning? You remember old Daniel uh, when he went and prayed three times a day and he was cast into the den of the lion? Uh, guess what? Uh, Darius stayed up all night and he was questioning, uh, can God uh, deliver Daniel? Uh, but Daniel arrested knowing that God can, amen. Yes, amen. You know, Daniel rested, amen. He knew that God could. Amen. You remember what? Old Nebuchadnezzar. When he throws those Hebrews in the fire, he, can God? <laughs> can the God that you serve protect you from the burning fire furnace? Those, those Hebrews said, sure God can. But you know what, Brother Cleo? They didn't stop there. They said, but just so you know, even if he don't, he's still God. And I got some news for you this morning. There's situations in my life and yours. Even if he don't, he is still God. Amen. Oh, yes, amen. He is still God. Even if he don't. And that's what they said. Even if he don't. <laughs> Even if he don't. How many times have you been there? Amen. How many of us is willing to say, sure, king, he can. But if he don't, if he don't, I'm willing to die in this battlefield. Even if he don't, I'm not giving up. Even if he don't, I'm not backing up. Even if he don't, I'm not quitting. Amen. Amen. Even if it's me and God. Amen. Amen. Even if everybody else goes away, 
Amen. Not me. <laughs> Lord, we're going to stand in the fire. That's what he said. But I want you to think about this. What are we declaring to our children? Oh, they learn from their fathers about his works. They were to tell to their children. There was a generation coming that must know. Amen. But you know what? They failed to do what they're supposed to do. And in verse 21, you'll find that God's wrath was induced. Look what he said there. Therefore the Lord heard this. What did he hear? He heard them, Brother Hope, when they said, Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? After all that he had done for this crowd. Can I go on and tell you something? After all God's done for the people at Faith Baptist Church through the years, who are we to sit back and say, Can God? You know what he done? God was wroth. He was displeased with their unbelief. It angered God that they said this. Can I go on and tell you, church, God takes us serious when we doubt his ability. And boy, his wrath was stirred up. And his work was impeded. Can I tell you, verse 41 said they limited the Holy One of Israel. God wanted to do so much more in these people's lives than he ever could do because of their unbelief. Because they limited him with doubting what he could do. What are we declaring to our children? Can I ask you a question? What are we declaring to this church? Can I tell you, by our actions, we either declaring God can or can God. In our actions, in our appetites, the things that we do. When we said our children, listen, do our children hear us grumbling, griping, and complaining about this church? If he hears us griping and grumbling and complaining about this church, you know what they're going to do? They're not only going to lose confidence in this church. They're going to lose confidence in the creator that set this whole thing in order. And out of our own mouth, they heard us say, that's the place that God wants us. But all we do is grumble, gripe, and complain about it. Nobody's good enough. The preacher, he ain't educated enough. He don't know nothing. The Sunday school teacher, he goes off on his tarrants every now and then. And, you know, and just, I mean, he has too many commercial breaks. And, you know, if we ain't careful, that'll be our mindset. When to be honest with you, those commercial breaks, Brother Terry, has been a help to my soul. <laughs> Even this morning, I was encouraged by the, by the hand of God. That's why I come to Sunday school. That's why I try to study and prepare through the week Amen. Amen. to preach God's word to this congregation so I don't have to do it Sunday morning so I can sit right there and hear the word of God Amen. so I can declare to my children, yes, God can. Yes, he can. God can do anything he yes, wants to. And there is, listen, and there is no greater God Upon this earth in our God. Yes. Amen. Yes, sir. What we, listen, not only this church, what about this community around us, church? You know, are we declaring to this community that God can? Yes, God can continue his work. And yes, the work of God will go on. And God will get glory for all, or are we sitting back saying, can God? I'm going to give you a news flash this morning. God can. But the question is not with God, it's with the people. God uses people. God, can I tell you something, church, this morning? God uses people. And when there is no people that are willing to be used by God, then the work will cease. He says, where there is no vision, 
the people perish. So you can make up your mind this morning either, yes, God can. Or we can sit back and say, can God? Can I tell you something this morning, church? You don't have no problem out of the crowd sitting in here that says God can. Praise God, God can. We're going to lift the banner. We're going to march on for the glory of God. But you know where the problems always come from? For that crowd that sits back and says, can God? Can God? Can God? Can God? Well, he can. If you'd get your place. Amen. Every one of us in this church that said this church is where God wanted them, you got a place. Amen. Not only you got a place, God expects you to participate. Amen. Yes. You know what? Every time, I'm going to tell you something, church, and I've told this a hundred times, but 101 won't hurt. Amen. Every time we stand with a hymn book half cracked, not even singing, not even opening our lips, do you know what we declare to our children? Can God? When we ought to be lifting up our voice like a trumpet, declaring to them, God can. God can. Oh, yes, amen. Every time, amen, what are we going to do? Are we going to Are we going to be a generation like this crowd that said, can God furnish a table after all that he's already done? Can he? Or are we going to sit back and say, God, I've seen you. <laughs> I've seen you showed up when there was no hope. What did he say? I'm going to read you one more verse. What did he say here in this verse? I'm, i got to find it. Uh, in verse number seven, or in verse number six, that the generation to come might know them, even the children which shall be born or should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children. Seem like generation after generation. Listen, that they might set their hope in God. What are they setting their hope in this morning? And not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. Can I tell you, our children are full of questions. And can I tell you, their questions this morning is, can I go on and tell you something? I'm just sharing my heart with you this morning. Can I go on and tell you what their questions is? First, who is this God that my daddy and mama talk about? I hear them talk about him, but they're talking, they're walking, and they're adding up. He ain't made so much change in their life. Yes, maybe he changed their dress. But he didn't change their desire a whole lot. Come on now. He didn't change their desire a whole lot. Their passions is not toward him as much as it is to other things. He don't have the preeminence that other things do. You know what? I want to just tell you, church. When we'll cancel birthday parties and we'll get off of work early and we'll, and we'll beat the bushes down to make it home in time to watch football games and stuff, but we won't do anything to make an effort to get to the house of God. Do you not think what we're declaring to our children leaves them with the question, who is this God? Not only are they asking, who is this God? Can I tell you who some of them's asking? What some of them's asking? Who is this preacher? Who is this preacher? I hear my daddy and mama talk one day, and he's the best. I mean, they love him. He's the best thing in the world. I'm glad that God sent him our way. Then the next day, I will just tell you. You may not still be so sure about it, but I am. You may not be so sure about it being the will of God, but I am. And listen, and until you can get your house in order, then quit worrying about mine. Amen. Amen. Is that right? Is that fair enough? Boy, I see these things. Who is this preacher? One day, boy, he's like John the Baptist coming out of the wilderness preaching. (laughs) And the next day, he's like Micah. Don't send him, God. Amen. Is that right? I'm just telling you. Who is that preacher? Amen. Who is that Sunday school teacher? 
I'm trying to figure out. These kids are asking these questions. They might not come out of their mouth to you parents, but you know what? In their heart, they're thinking, who is my Sunday school teacher? I mean, the man of God's got confidence enough in him or her to put him over the Sunday school class. But they've heard mama and daddy say things that, by the way, they have repented of <laughs> and moved on. But you're still talking about it. And you send them up to their class and hoping that they're going to get a hold of something. Who is that Sunday school teacher? Can I ask you another question I ask you? How much of that Bible do we really believe? Do we believe it in part? Or do we believe it in whole? Because some's got their pen knives out. And they're cutting out the parts they don't want to hear. And not only are they cutting out what they don't want to hear, they're making sure their children don't hear it either. Amen. Amen. Can I go on and tell you something, church? Amen. I wish everybody was here this morning, amen, because they need to hear it. I'm just telling you. Do you know what? It does us no good. If there's somebody in this church got a higher standard than you, you ought to praise God for them. Amen. You ought to lift them up. You ought to say, praise God, amen. I'm glad that their standard's higher than mine. Yep, yep, yep. Although I may not biblically agree with it. Right. Amen. I'm glad that somebody is trying to get close to God. But, and some do. Some got standards that's higher than others, amen, and that crowd sits back and says, praise God for them. But there's others that say, well, we're going to have to find a way to tear that down. Yeah. Amen. And we're going to find a way to bring them back down to our level, amen, right. unless you think a little bit more of them than what you ought to. Right. Yes, and there's some that legitimately study and trying to find some answer for their own heart and their own peace. And that's good. I commend that. I commend people that take a Bible and say, I want to study for myself. Right. Amen. Amen. But I also condemn that crowd that says, I ain't studying nothing. This is the way I feel about it. Amen. This is the way I feel about it, bless God. And not only I feel about that, I'm going to call everybody else up that I know that feel the same way, and I'm going to talk to them. Yeah. Amen. I'm going to call them up because I don't agree with what that preacher said. I'm not going to call and ask the Sunday school teacher what he thinks. And I'm not going to call, amen, uh, somebody else. And ask, you know what? I'm going to find that crowd sitting in there that I know. They agree with me. So i got somebody that I can tell my children, I told you so. These others. I'm just preaching to the choir this morning, amen. Listen, I wish the whole choir was here, amen. Amen, that's right. Amen, that's right, amen. You get to, listen, I'm talking about can God. You got any qu listen, you know what? <laughs> listen, we're just, we just trying to help us this morning. Right. You think about this, amen. I hear enough questions, amen. Preacher, I don't like the way he does this. I don't like the way she does that. I don't like the way, ain't nobody ever come to me and said, I don't like the way I do this. Preacher, can you help me? I don't like the way I do this. But they say, I don't like the way he does it, and I don't like the way she does it, amen. And by the way, amen, over yonder, I never hear, have them come say, Preacher, can you help me with this? Amen. Can God, or God can? <laughs> Very seldom, amen, did you get that question. I shouldn't say never. There's been one or two <laughs> that would say, yes, sir, we want to find some answers. And I am all for us finding some answers in this Bible. But don't declare to your children that God can't. Declare to them that God can. Man, God can. Because can I tell you, friend, they was a generation. Can I go on and help us with something? I'm going to go back. We'll be done in a minute, amen. One o'clock hour ain't that bad. You think about it. You go back from over yonder where they was at the, in, in the Egypt. When they come up, you know what? They come up out of Egypt. And even Pharaoh tried to, he tried to get them to compromise and said, you can go but leave your children. Yeah. You know what they did? They stood and said, no, sir. Right. Our children's going with us. Right. Now we're content with going and leaving our children in Egypt. You hear what I'm saying? I mean, we content, amen. Yes, we're going, but we ain't going to put it on them. 
Amen. But you know what I find? They did good coming out of Egypt with their children. But it was a whole different story coming out of that wilderness with their children. Some of them died. Some of them never got to see. Amen. Some of them never got to see Canaan. Amen. Some of y'all hear what I'm saying? Some of them never, amen, crossed the Jordan. Hey, so many that died between the Red Sea and the Jordan, amen. Uh, and can I tell you, a lot of it was because of their parents. If they would have marched like God told them to and quit going around the bush and quit taking the long route and if they would have quit trying to look for the easy path and the path of least resistance and marched forward, it wouldn't have been that long of a journey. But 40 years. 40 years. And then thank God when somebody said, I've wandered long enough around this mountain. I've been here too long. We've got to get up and go on. Some of us is marching too long around the mountain. Amen. When God says, look, we've got to get past it. We've got to march on for the glory of God. Would you stand with us this morning? We'll get Sister Lynn to play. Maybe you want to pray. Think about it this morning. Are we declaring, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Are we saying, God can furnish a table in this wilderness today? You might be in the wilderness. And I'm